jelly spoons. Today, batteries. We're going to look at batteries today. Uh, there are various different types of batteries we can use. Today we're going to be focusing on two principal types. This, the, uh, the good old fashioned, the stalwart, the lead acid battery. This is a sealed version. This is designed for use in uh, burglar alarms and things like that. Uh, and also we're going to look at a slightly newer type of battery, this, the lithium polymer battery. Now you've seen me use these in projects before, you've seen me use both types of batteries, but I'm going to talk a little bit about the difference between the two and some of the pros and cons of each. So to start with, we'll start with the old-fashioned lead acid battery. These come in various sizes. Uh, this is a 12 volt 1.2 amp hour battery. This is a 12 volt 1.8 amp hour battery. Now what this means in literal terms, it, the, these capacities, means that this battery will supply, in theory, 1.2 amps for one hour. Now in practice it's slightly different uh, and that's one of the main things we want to look at today. If you try to draw 1.2 amps from this battery for an hour, you would probably get about half of that because the battery would go flat very quickly. Um, it would also cause damage. Um, the, the internals of the battery will heat up uh, and it will actually greatly shorten the life of the battery. Now, I'm not a massive expert on batteries, but I've been told by people that are that lead acid batteries, the capacities or the ratings are generally intended for a 20 hour discharge cycle, which means that the battery is intended to be plugged into something for 20 hours without being recharged. With lead acid batteries, they have no kind of overcharge or overload protection in them, which means you can effectively draw as much current as you like from the battery. The problem is, as I mentioned earlier, if you draw too much power from these batteries, not only will they go flat very, very quickly, but you can also damage the battery internally. And if you try and draw too much power, there is the risk of the battery overheating uh, and even catching fire, or even exploding, in fact. <laughs> um, so you do have to be careful. These lithium polymer batteries do have a little bit of a reputation for being dangerous. Um, you may well have heard stories, seen stories in the press about laptop batteries catching fire. Um, there's been a big hoo-ha recently with this particular mobile phone that will remain nameless with the batteries catching fire. And yes, that is a possibility. The reason this happens is the, the chemical composition of, of these batteries is very diff different to a lead acid battery. And you can end up in a situation where with a, a, something called thermal runaway. Now, thermal runaway is where one or more of the cells of the battery will overheat and will get to a point where a, a chemical chain reaction takes place and the battery will just keep getting hotter and hotter and hotter until eventually it will either catch fire or even explode. So the way to get around this with these lithium polymer batteries, and this one in particular, these type, is they have built-in overload and overcharge protection. So what does this mean? Well, in practice, it means that you can't overcharge the battery. You can't put too much power into the battery to charge it so it won't overheat while it's charging. And also, more importantly, you can't draw too much current from it. So again, you can't... This battery, for example, I could, although this is a 1.2 amp hour rated battery, I could plug this into, say, a smoke generator and draw 10 amps from it. Admittedly, if I draw 10 amps from it, it will go flat in a couple of minutes and it will damage the battery um, almost irreversibly. But with this, if you try and plug in something too powerful for the battery, the battery will just switch itself off. So that obviously greatly reduces the risk of damage. A lead acid battery will actually stand a fair amount of abuse. Um, as I said, I have actually drawn 10 amps from a little battery like this and I've never had a problem with them overheating or catching fire. What tends to happen is they just fail very quickly. They'll go flat very quickly and after a couple of times of doing that, they won't hold a charge anymore. Uh, I've got one on the bench over there that's going to be recycled. But although it's a 12 a volt battery, it will now won't put out more than 4.5 volts. So it's obviously the cells inside have been damaged 
and it, it won't hold a charge anymore. So you don't want to draw too much power from these because you don't want to damage them. For these batteries, you simply can't draw too much power from them. They won't, they won't let you draw too much power. One of the problems I found with these batteries is that the manufacturer, while they give you the capacity, so 12 volts, 1,800 milliamp hours, it doesn't actually tell you what the maximum safe discharge rate is. The maximum safe discharge rate is the amount of current you can safely pull from this battery without causing any damage. And the, over, the protection circuit inside the battery, it will set how much power you can draw. The problem is, as I say, the manufacturer doesn't tell you <laughs> what that safe maximum discharge rate is. Most of the time it doesn't matter. Uh, if you're using this to power you know, a camcorder or a, a, an alarm or something like that, they draw so little power, this, it won't affect the battery. When you start getting into more high powered applications, sort of bigger motors, um, smoke generators, things like that, that draw a lot of current, you need to know how much power the battery will safely put out so you know whether the battery will work with the application you've got. Now, as I say, the manufacturer doesn't tell you this. They should really, they should supply a data sheet, but for some of these, you know, cheapo um, batteries, they don't actually tell you. A lot of the people that you buy these from, they're just resellers, they're not the manufacturers. So what I'm going to do today is actually test some of these batteries and see if I can figure out what the maximum safe discharge rate is for each type of battery. Now, to do this, let's put these on one side for a minute, I've made a little test rig. And here it is. So what I've got here, it's very, very simple. It's just a piece of plywood with a couple of nails banged in at the ends. This wire is heating element wire. It's the same wire that I used to make the heating elements in the smoke generators. What we're going to do is take our test rig that we built previously. We're going to attach the wires. So one end goes to one end of the wire. And now when we place the other end of the wire at various points along the heating element, what will happen is we'll change the resistance and we'll draw more or less power. So what we can do now is create a gauge that shows us how much power is required at various points along the wire. So let's connect up a battery and see what happens. We use the lead acid battery because it doesn't have any overload protection, which means we can draw as much power from it as we want. And for this, for the amount of time we're going to be doing this, it won't actually hurt the battery. So we connect power, plug it in, switch it on. Now, at the moment we're drawing zero amps because we're not connected to anything. If, for example, I touch the wire here, now you can see that's drawing 2.4 amps. So what I can do now is take a pencil and I can put a little mark there, have to be careful because this wire gets hot. 2.4, okay? And now here, for example, and that's 3.8. So 3.8. And now we get down here, this is where we have to get careful because this is going to get very hot very quickly. So, that's 6.5 and you can see how hot that wire got. <laughs> so that's 6.5 amps. 6.5 and I can still feel the heat coming off that wire so I have to be careful not to burn my fingers. Uh, and if we go over to this side, so if we say here, that's 1.8 amps, so 1.8, and if we go here, it's 1.4, and if we go here, that's 1.2, And then finally, if we put it straight on the other end, that's 1.1 amp. So, 
1.1. So what we can do now, now we've got an idea of how far what current we need at each point or what current the cable is drawing at each point. We can switch this off, we can plug in one of the lithium batteries. So I'll use this one first. Plug that in, switch it on, switch on the meter. And now let me show you what I mean. If I try and draw, now this is a 1.8 amp hour battery. If I try and draw here, so for example, 3.2 amps from it, and you see it instantly, the battery has switched itself off. Disconnect that, cycle the power on the battery again. And that's 2.4 amps. So I think it's safe to say Oh, that's getting hot. Let's switch that off and let it cool down for a second. Um, I think it's safe to say this little battery will supply uh, 2.4 amps quite happily. So let's unplug that. So what I'm going to do is I'll just make a note on this with a with a sharpie um, that this is 2400. So now I know that that battery will supply 2400 milliamps, 2.4 amps. So now let's try another battery. So we'll try this one next. This is um, an 8000 milliamp hour, so 8 amps. Let's plug this one and see what it does. Plug it in, switch the battery on. Right, so there we go. So let's try again 2.4. Roughly two and a half amps. That's supplying quite happily. Got to be careful because the wires get hot very quickly. Let's try the three. Ah, oh, now that's it. That switched itself off immediately. So let's cycle the battery. The battery is not even getting warm. Um, and again, that's the whole point of the protection circuit, is to protect the battery, to stop it getting hot. Now this is quite happily sitting, chugging away at 2.8 amps. That's getting hot, let's just turn this off and let it cool down for a second. And we'll go off a little touch higher. That's 3 amps, that's reading now, 2.9. So this is reading approximately 3 amps now. So I think we're going to have I think we're going to have a similar result. We're going to have about three amps on this. So let's make a note on the battery here. So we've got three thousand. So that's fine. Put this to one side. Let's unplug that for a moment. Now finally the big boy. Um, this is a 10,000 milliamp hour battery, so 10 amp hour. So let's see what this does. Plug it in and contact. So we've got 12 volts. So let's go straight for 3.6. And that's doing that quite nicely. Let's go a bit higher. That's five amps. That's getting hot now. <laughs> let's just let those wires cool down and such. So let's go for six and a half amps. Right, it doesn't like six and a half amps. So, 5.5. Whoa, that's getting hot. <laughs> We've got to be careful with this. Yeah, that's getting very hot very quickly, obviously, because that's, I mean, that's six amps going through that wire. That's a lot of power. Right, yeah. So I think we're looking at about six amps. 5.8, six amps. Yeah, if you go just over six amps, it, it goes for a few seconds and then switches itself off. So 
I think we're going to be looking at say, I think if we say that's five, five point two, five point eight. So let's let's try an experiment. We'll switch that off. We'll clip this on here and contact. So that's 5.9 amps and it switched itself off. Okay, that's fine. That's very, very hot. Move it down a touch. So this is 5.7, 45 watts. Yeah, and it switched itself off. But I think it's run constantly. Let's move it down a touch more. Cycle the power. This is 5.1 amps. So 42 watts. That's chugging along quite nicely. The power is obviously going down because it's, it's drawing a lot of power from the battery. So I think 5 amps it's safe to say this this has a maximum safe discharge rate of about five amps um, let's switch that off because that's getting very hot the wires are getting very hot so we'll say five amps for this so five thousand but as you can see with these batteries it's important to know not only the capacity but the maximum safe discharge rate this has uh, been useful to you, it's certainly been useful to me. Um, the system, and I know how much power it needs, I know which battery to use for the best effect for high power applications. Um, for lower power applications, like so for example, um, my son's iron chap suit, I've tested that, I know that draws just under one amp to power the entire suit, not including the smoke generator. So for the the circuit that controls the power and the heartbeat and everything else, I'm sure some of you have seen it. I can use the smallest of those batteries that I've got. This one, quite easily to power that whole suit. It won't last very long um, because uh, it's only a 1.8 amp hour battery. But it should power it for about two hours. Whereas this one will power it for about ten hours because we're drawing less than one amp on a 10 amp hour battery. But we also know that we're well within the power range of the battery. Now the interesting thing is the smoke generator on that suit is about four and a half amps. So I know that this battery will power it, but I also know that this one won't, yeah? So, as I say, I hope this has proved useful to you and it shows that how, with a very simple setup, we can actually do some quite complicated testing uh, and we can find out things that are important for us to know that unfortunately have not been told to us by the manufacturers. So, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks. Bye.